In the last video, we looked at how Daniel understood that the Babylonian captivity was to be 70 years according to the word of the Lord through Jeremiah. In this video, we will explore how Daniel was truly a man of the word and how the language of God's word became the language of prayer. It would appear that Daniel was reading or had read Solomon's prayer at the dedication of the temple of the Lord recorded in the books of Kings and Chronicles. In 2 Chronicles chapter 6 verses 36 to 39, Solomon prayed to God, When they, as in God's people, sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to a land far or near, yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, and have committed wickedness, and when they return to you with all their heart, and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive, and pray towards their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and toward the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. In 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4 to 8, God appeared to Solomon, saying, Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, as I promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and this house which I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be like a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss, and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? This is exactly what happened. Generations of the kings of the house of Judah, along with the people, turned away from God and did what was evil in His sight. As a result, great disaster came upon them, and they were taken as captives into Babylon as Jerusalem was destroyed and laid desolate. Daniel realized that he was under God's prophetic umbrella, and prophecy was actually becoming history in his very own time. God said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Thus Daniel set his face towards the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth and ashes following the exact same pattern laid out in the books of Chronicles and Kings. We find that Daniel's prayer and supplication concerned number 1. The city of Jerusalem number 2. The temple or the sanctuary of God and number 3 the captives of Judah. Daniel chapter 9 verse 4 tells us that Daniel both prayed and made confession. What did Daniel confess? In summary, he confessed that they had sinned, committed iniquity, rebelled, departed from God's precepts and judgments, transgressed the law, and did not obey God's voice, failing to pray that they might turn from their iniquities and understand God's truth. And what did Daniel pray? He prayed for mercy, that God would hear, forgive, listen, act, and cause His face to shine on Jerusalem which lay desolate. As a true intercessor, Daniel identified with the sins of the people, though he himself was a righteous man before God. Daniel prayed based on God's word, His will, and promises. He prayed the word back to God. 
Take note of the similarity between Solomon's prayer in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and Daniel's prayer in Daniel chapter 9. In this final part of the video, it is important to bring out that Daniel in his prayer referred to both the law of Moses and the prophets at least twice. Verse 6, Neither have we heeded your servants the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers and to all the people of the land. Verse 10, We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in His laws which He set before us by His servant the prophets. Verse 11, Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against Him. And verse 13, As it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. These verses highlight the importance of studying the Old Testament, the law of Moses, which is the first five books of the Bible, and the prophets that we might have insight into what God is doing and to be able to pray as Daniel did. But why are the law and prophets really important? The law and the prophets reveal two facets of God. Number one, the justice and holiness of God. And number two, the grace and love of God. Jesus said, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus also said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Furthermore, Jesus said to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus that beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The word of the Lord according to the law and the prophets reveals the holy nature, character and will of Jesus Christ. It states that sin, according to the law and the prophets, must be judged. The house of Judah neither obeyed God's law nor heeded his servants, the prophets. And as a result, the curse and the oath written in the law were poured out on them and were taken as captives into Babylon. The reality is that we have all sinned and stand guilty before a just and holy God. Yet at the same time, the law and the prophets also reveal God's plan of redemption to save us from sin through the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. It is at this moment that God administered His justice. It is at the cross that Jesus took our place when God's wrath that we so deserved was poured out on Him. And now because of this, God was able to demonstrate His love and mercy towards us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him shall not perish but have eternal life. God's love and mercy could not be demonstrated unless He first revealed His justice and wrath on sin. Therefore, the cross is both a picture of God's holiness and love. As already stated, the Word of God according to the law and the prophets reveals the nature, character and will of Jesus. The Word of God therefore empowers us to pray according to the nature, character and will of God just as Daniel did. Daniel took the time to study the word of the Lord according to the prophet Jeremiah and understood that after the 70 years were completed at Babylon, God would visit His people and perform His word and bring them back to Jerusalem, knowing that the thoughts He has towards them are of peace and not evil, to give them a future and a hope. Daniel was thus able to pray according to God's will. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. 
We learn from Daniel how the language of the Word became the language of prayer. The life of Daniel challenges us to become people of the book, people of the Bible. In the next video, as we look into the 70 weeks prophecy, we will see how the language of prayer in turn becomes the language of prophecy.